welcome to yet another video of Acharya Nidana Academy. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the concept of Sthana Gati. Specifically, this particular Sthana Gati refers to the type of Abhyantara Hed. Abhyantara Hed refers to Dosha and Dosha as per the context of Ayurveda Fundamentals. So, the Sthana or the normal functioning may be attributable to even dosha, dhatu and mana. And it can be identified by the observation of the lakshanas identified in the human mind. It is being mentioned in Charaka Samhita, Dosha Prabhutta Swam Lingam, Darshayanti Athabalam, Shina Jahati Lingam Swam, Samaha Swam Karma Kuruvate. So here, the later half of the second line discusses about the sthana or normal functioning of the dosha or Abhyantarahit. <coughs> Regarding the normal functioning of the dosha as per the ashtanga hridaya sutra sthana 11 chapter it discusses utsah utshwas nishwas chesha vega pravartane samyak gatya cha dhatuna akshanam patave na cha anugrinhatya vikrita pittam paktyushma darshane chitra druchi prabhame dhadhi shauryatanu mardavai shleshma astiratva snigthatva Sandibandakshama Devi. This is about the functioning of the dosha as per Ashtanga Hridaya. As per the dhatu, Prinanam Jeevanam Lepaha Sneho Dharana Purani Garbhut Padascha Karmani Shishtam Karma Kramat Smritam. Ashtanga Hridaya, Sutra Sthana Laven Chapter. As far as the Prakrita Mala, Avashtamba Purishasya Mutrasya Kleda Vahanam. Svedasya Kleda Vitriti. This is about the sthana or the prakrita functions of Abhyantarahitu, that is dosha, dhatu, and mana. Let us learn these with one or two examples. Here, let me discuss this with the context of the functioning of mala. As per the uh, Ashtanga Hridaya, it is being mentioned that the functions of Purisha, that is Avashtamba. The Avashtamba refers to what? Avashtamba means it is sustaining the body. Purishasya, so that means it is considered to be the main functions of a Purisha, a fecal matter. When you think about the whole extent of the presence of Purisha, so that is mainly related to this particular large intestine as soon as the undigested food residue that starts entering from the small intestine to large intestine from there it will be entering that in the form of undigested food residue which contains most of the uh, water portion that is nearly around 1500 ml of the water portion as well as the ions such as sodium, potassium, calcium ions. When you think about the, the electrolytes, so the absorption of the electrolytes takes place in the large intestine. That is sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride, which we have, that is the, these are the ions that are going to get absorbed. So these ions are necessary for almost all the activities that is skeletal muscular activities smooth muscular activities cardiac muscular activities and even the all the neuronal activities in terms of the central nervous system as well as peripheral nervous system suppose if the particular avashtamba function is not happening so that means the absorption of these 
ions they are going to get deficient so that means all these muscular activities skeletal muscular smooth muscular and cardiac muscular activity plus neuronal activity both in the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system they are going to get dysfunctioning so that means that is very very essential for all these kinds of the activities the second major thing that is the water portion nearly around 1500 ml of water that will be entering from small intestine into the large intestine at the cecum but when this particular chyme enters into the rectum it will be reduced to 100 ml so that means 1500 ml of the water which is entering into the cecum so that is going to get reduced to 100 ml when the same uh, the food residue undigested food residue entering from the cecum to rectum so that means absorption of water also is going to take place there so if the person is suffering from either diarrhea or constipation or pain in the hypogastric region or pain in the right flank or left flanks implies the dysfunction of large intestine so that means so here abhastamba function of the purusha is going to get disturbed which is again resulting in the water loss as well as electrolyte loss so this is about the impact of abhastamba in the human body hence it is being considered to be abhastamba that means sustaining the human body can be possible if the purusha functioning is in the normal state next about the cleda when you think about the cleda cleda refers to the fluid or liquid which contains nutrients and metabolites in it so in the sense when you think about the cleda cleda vahana is the function of a mutra and Veda Vidhruti is a function of Sveda. Now, how you are going to differentiate this? When you think about the fluid intake, on an average, the person will be going to consume 1 to 1.5 liters in 24 hours. So that means, with the same amount, of the person may pass the urine, 1 to 1.5 liters of urine that will be passed in 24 hours when you consider this as the intake is equal to output when you think about sweda or sweat nearly around 400 ml of the sweat will be passed in 24 hours but if the person is suffering from any kind of the fever or inflammatory reaction may be allergic manifestation which is leading to the manifestation of a fever in that particular situation the water loss through the form of sweat may be up to 2 liters per hour so that means in the svedana is happening very rapidly that will be leading to the hypovolemia rapidly so in the sense when there is a cleda vahana is happening so there will be the chronic fluid loss may be possible but when there is a cleda vidhruti so that means if that is not functioning properly that may lead to very rapid fluid loss this is depicted by the image that is being shown in the particular picture this is the normal depiction of human body wherein alimentary canal is the main area where the fluid entry is possible from there it will be entering in intravascular compartment from there it will be entering into interstitial compartment from there it will be entering into 
intracellular compartment. Whenever there is clay, the Vidhruti function is happening. So this is resulting in the shrinkage of intravascular compartment, which in turn results in the shrinkage of interstitial compartment, which in turn results in the again shrinkage of intracellular compartment. So that means when you think about it, so you are going to see this much amount of the fluid loss may be possible if the clay the dysfunction is happening either because of a mutra uh, srotu dushti or svedavaha srotu dushti or if there is any dysfunction of mutra or sveda is happening so the take home message from today's discussion is sthana is a type of the though it is considered as location in this context it has to be considered as balanced or normal state of abhyantara hetu so that is normal state of dosha that is vata pitta and kapha and normal state of dhatu that is rasa rakta mamsa medha asthi majja and shukra and normal functioning of mala that is considered to be mutra purisha and sveda etc adequate exposure of the to the bahya hetu of these may be responsible for the balance of these dosha dhatu and mala in the body so to topic this we have discussed avastambha which is the function of purisha kleda vahana which is the function of mutra and kleda vidruti which is a function of sveda that is being described as examples here it can be applied to other the lakshanas which are being mentioned in terms of the dosha and other dhatus also so dear friends what are the major key takeaways from today's discussion mention in the comment box and what is the one particular topic that you would like to hear in this particular channel mention in the comment box below and if you are liking this particular video then spread this video to the maximum number of true ayurveda learners so that we can make a huge movement out of this particular small message that's all for today something more in the next video thank you